In another southeastern state, Enugu, to be precise, gunmen once again attack a police station and kill officers. And an asylum from the United Kingdom might be given to some members of the indigenous people of Biafra, and the federal government is not happy about it. Lost Politics starts now. I am Justin Akadoye. Welcome back now. Gunmen reportedly attacked the Divishta Police Headquarters, Adani in Uzo Owani, local government area of Enugu State, in the early hours of today. Two police officers on duty were killed and several others injured. The police station was also burned. In recent times, police stations in the southeast and some state in the south south have been the target of gunmen. What is really going on in the southeastern part of Nigeria, and why are police stations a target? Well, joining us to discuss this is Daniel Undukwe, the police public relations officer in the Enugu State Command, and of course, uh, retired Air Vice Marshal of Femi Badibo. We'll begin from Enugu State, where we have the PPRO joining us, uh, Mr. Daniel Undukwe. Uh, many thanks for joining us once again. From what we understand, uh, the incident happened uh, around uh, the wee hours of today. Can you bring us up to speed uh, as exactly what happened we need to know? All right. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, the incident happened, uh, like you said, in the wee hours of this morning, exactly at about um, 2.30 a.m. when uh, Adani Police Station, Divisional Headquarters in Ozo One, a local government area, came under heavy attack by yet to be identified gunmen who, though they were vehemently resisted by the police operatives on duty, but um, unfortunately, two of the policemen uh, paid the ultimate price. They were, they were critically hit by a bullet and then taken to the hospital and where they were confirmed dead. And on receipt of the information, the Commissioner of Police, CP Mohammed in Dartsfield, the UPSC, immediately galvanized heads of other uh, sister security agency including that of the DSS, the civil defense, and immediately first thing in the morning, as early as six, uh, everybody left Converge and left to that very station for on-the-spot assessment. And uh, you realize that due to the numbers, because the hoodlum came in their numbers, uh, in spite of the resistance that were put up, they succeeded in setting up setting the police station ablaze. And then uh, that was just exactly what happened. And immediately after the on-the-spot assessment, the commissioner of police ordered the immediate uh, deployment of the command and intelligence assets uh, with the view to identifying and apprehending whoever these uh, yet to be identified gunmen are and bring them to book appropriately. That is exactly what happened, and that is exactly uh, what we are doing and at this very moment to ensure that this very situation is grappled with. All right, uh, so far from what you've told us, uh, we hear that two uh, police officers uh, you know, were killed, unfortunately, in the attack. Uh, but so far, you know, from previous attacks we've seen so far in the southeast, uh, where formations uh, were attacked, they also carted away with uh, weapons. Uh, was that also the case in Enugu State? Uh, that is, like I said, not just the deployment of that in proper investigation, both discreet and uh, covert and overt, will be conducted. And in the end, we would have also have a proper inventory of what may have happened. But as of this moment, it's just the loss of life that we have, but uh, further investigation could unravel and so many other things. 
So what's the situation, uh, the mood like right now in uh, Enugu State, uh, specifically uh, the polls of um, residents? Uh, how are they responding to all of these attacks, Eva, the police station? Enugu, Enugu, where... Enugu, State, Enugu State is relatively calm. Mm. Uh, the police is always out there, and we have been doing what we have to do. Well, it's unfortunate we had the situation we had, uh, and like you rightly pointed out, it's been one of the reoccurring things within the area, the entire zone. Um, but I strongly believe beyond just the police doing what they have to do, every other right-thinking citizen, especially in the southeast, must begin to realize that this is not just an attack against the police, it's an attack against not just the state, but the people. Mm. Because attack is not owned by the policemen, it's owned by the society. The same police officers you attack, you like we had gruesomely murdered, they are no strangers. They are not coming from the moon. They are also members of the same society, like you and like every other person. So if everybody think you need to sit down somewhere, fold your hand and allow a thing like this to continue to happen, you don't find reasons to volunteer credible information and intelligence to the police that will aid the police to fish out whoever the perpetrators of these things are then you're not doing yourself any good. So it calls for it calls for collectivity of responsibility. All hand has got to be on deck. You must begin to realize that it's not just about the police, it's about the society, it's about you. So we must come together and fight this one situation as a people. All right, speaking of collective uh, fight right now, would you say that uh, uh, the people of um, Anambra State that's resident uh, are actually forthcoming in recent times uh, of uh, you know the situation of uh, crime in that particular state. That's on the one hand. In Enugu State, I'm sorry about that. Then again, uh, on the other hand, uh, another question is that uh, since there has been several attacks on formations across the southeast, uh, did you, uh, your command, see these uh, coming? I didn't get that, sorry. Okay, I asked two in one question, but let me just take it one at a time right now. This is not the first attack in the southeast and, of course, south-south um, region in Nigeria. There, ha there have been several attacks. There was in Mbiri. There were several, of course, in Imo State. But then again, uh, following all of these uh, recent occurrences, uh, did uh, the police in Enugu State uh, see it coming? Were there proactive measures instead of uh, being reactionary? There's never been a time where reactionary is always a is always a proactive and preventive measures that will be put in place. But that is not to mean it's, full, it's, it's, it's foolproof. It's not going to be like 100%. You don't expect it to be absolute. That's the more reason why, yes, we've been getting, been getting the much uh, necessary assistance from law-abiding members of society. But I also think, as much as we might have the iron intelligence apparatus that will go out there to gather credible intelligence to avert uh, the occurrence of situations like this. I think more than ever, it's high time everyone also begin to look at it like something that is not just against an organization, but against the people. Because the policeman, you think you attack and kill. The police station, you think you probably you raise or burn vehicle and the rest of that. You should also need to understand that it's not the policeman's money that was used to be the police station or the vehicles. And the policeman, you probably will end up maiming or killing is not coming from the moon it's just like you and like every other member of society the very fact that he does the job every other person so many other person may not easily want to do doesn't mean for whatever reason you have any issue with any system or whatever i think you think is the police because we've looked at this it's just been like a real occurring you attack you do this if you succeed in taking arms you do you just demolish and vandalize is that the best for anybody so the whole thing comes down to the fact that as much as on our part, we're not going to give up. On our part, we're not going to stop doing what we have to do. But we also think we need all hands at this material moment to be on, the, on deck. Because an attack on the police by extension is an attack so on, on the, the people, people and the society at large. All right. On the final note, just a quick one. Any, any leads, uh, any suspects uh, so far? Like I said, full-scale investigation has been launched, like the CP directed that both the operational and intelligence asset of the command be deployed immediately, and that has been done. His Highness believe that God willing, and with the cooperation of members of society, we sure 
which begin to make some new roads because like uh, uh we pointed out it was a gun duel and some persons so even part of the hoodlums that carried out the attack oh. some of them sustained bullet injuries and oh, we, we, we the cp has called on not just the law abiding citizen of the state but owners of medical facilities should you come across anybody who's got bullet wound injury, don't hesitate to report to the police. Well, thank These you are so ways much. we can together begin to handle this thing together. And well, by God's grace, so we'll gravel it to an end. Well, thank you so much. Indeed, uh, we you. get to uh, expect, uh, you know, fallout and, and of course, uh, investigations on that particular incident. And uh, like you said, God willing, the hoodlums and the perpetrators of the attack uh, would be brought to your book. Many thanks once again. We have been speaking thank with you. Daniel Ndokwe, the police public relations officer in charge of Enugu State Command. All right, we also have joining us this evening, uh, retired Air Vice Marshal Femi Agbadibo. Good evening to you, uh, Avia. Many thanks for joining us on Plus Our Politics. Indeed, you have been aware, and that if you have been following the news, there have been recent attacks on uh, security formations across the southeast and uh, south south. Uh, on the surface, what exactly do you make of uh, this uh, recent uh, development? I think it's, um, you know, there, there is a problem. Um, it started with IPOB, and um, the government agencies have not been able to contain IPOB. Um, they've been training, they've armed their people, and they continue to carry out acts of uh, vandalism in that area. But also, there is... If you, if you notice, in the Southeast particularly, there is a very large number of unemployed young men, uh, disgruntled young men, young men who have been used in the past by politicians to uh, carry out acts of uh, toggery and all in the process of elections. Uh, they've all been abandoned. They've been left to their devices. And so when a body like IBOB comes up, they're able to, they, they gladly move in there because not only are they being trained, they are being paid some uh, stipends and they are being promised a change, a change that will see them through. And unfortunately, the way the police has been protecting and supporting uh, the political elite who uh, don't seem to be interested in investing in the upliftment of the rural area in the southeast has turned most of them against the police. Um, it's not just about burning down police stations, but I think people are looking to ahead to the next round of elections. Uh, elections are coming up in the in in in, in Enugu, uh, Enugu State, for instance, and Ambra, for instance, and a few other areas. And if you can, you know, get the police to uh, weaken their presence. Definitely, the thugs will be able to have better handling of what is going on there. But I'm disturbed that, in spite of what is going on, the police are not beefing up their security. Um, the number of police uh, situations where you have a few men in the station at night can no longer hold. Uh, we have a problem in Nigeria where nobody is really ready to give us statistics. Mm. What is the strength of the police? in this areas, in this police stations, and so on. And how capable are they to withstand this kind of uh, attacks that are coming on? There's a, the, when the police cannot contain situation, internal security laws require that the police must request for assistance from, let's say, the army. You can see the situation here now. A police station is attacked late in the night. Early in the morning, Commissioner of Police calls all the paramilitary forces and they go there. Uh, to me, it's, it, that's not really the situation. Right. If you know that you are beginning to have problems, then you must begin to work out an arrangement let me butt in where here. some of these people can come in there to help protect oh. your police stations. All right, let me butt in here now, AVM. You know, this is really, really uh, shocking, as it were, because uh, it is not the first time we've seen uh, these attacks. Uh, 
uh, not so long ago, it happened in Emo State. Uh, you know, there was a prison break. Uh, uh, you know, a formation was attacked. Uh, they carted away with weapons. It has happened in Ebony State. It has happened uh, in. Uh, in a, a number of states, one would have thought that uh, the police uh, would have been more proactionary, you know, instead of uh, going to visit formations after these incidents have happened. What have they failed to see? What are they not doing right? How come they take so much time before they can actually put their acts together? Well, um, I'm sorry, there's a light out. I'm trying to get things sorted out here. But uh, the, the, the truth is that. Uh, we must not forget that there is a grand design, uh, like I said, to weaken the police so that something more serious can happen. Under normal circumstances, when you have, even if it is just a small police station with uh, a police post with five men there in some rural areas, that kind of um, ensures some level of security. People feel safe that the police is around. Now you are seeing even police posts that are uh, up to the DPO level and above, area commands, being attacked by this man. What he's doing is to weaken the sense of confidence of the people in the area, oh. it weakens the level of security. And if we are not careful, we are going to see a day very soon when a very large force of this, uh, this insurgents will come in and do something more serious to a whole area. So it is very important that um, the Nigerian police take it serious, the Nigerian government as a whole mm. takes it serious. And if it means helping the police by securing the police, bringing in additional forces uh, from either the military or the paramilitary to help secure these police stations, we must begin to do them immediately. All right, let's talk more. In your opening salvo, you mentioned uh, uh, the IPOB. You talked about the ESN. You know, previous attacks, uh, the police uh, you know, has linked them to some of these attacks. But they have come out several times to say, you know, they are not, that, that's the ESN right now. They're not responsible for the attacks. Looking at it as a security uh, expert and consultant, uh, what would you say is the reason for this uh, series, uh, series of attacks? Would you say it's because of the no love lost relationship uh, between the police and of course uh, maybe uh, residents or civilians uh, as it were across Nigeria? Um, you see, the police a long time ago came out with a slogan, the police is your friend. But even at a normal traffic uh, junction, what you find is not friendliness but a situation where the policemen are using their uniforms to harass the average citizen. So while the big man, quote unquote, goes around with as many as six armed policemen, sometimes mobile policemen, properly known as Mopo, mm. the average man is being harassed by policemen on the streets. So there is anger, there is frustration. And mind you, it's not just police. It, it, we are getting to a situation, very disturbing situation now in Nigeria, where every uniformed authority now sees that uniform as a tool to harass the common man, mm. to collect a little more, a little extra money, no matter how small, to enhance their take home pay. Uh, the authorities, their superior authorities continue to, to say they frown on these things and so on. But we are not seeing any serious action taken to dissuade this. I do not understand how an unemployed person applies for a job, gets a job of a uniformed organization in Nigeria, starting from police to uh, any, even the local station, and then goes out on the street with that uniform and to just turn every position where he finds himself to a toll gate where he collects money. And the fact that he's carrying a gun makes him even more intimidating. So there is anger. The police must change their style. Uh, this slogan of being your friend, um, it must go beyond that. You go to a police station, you are required to pay for even documentation and everything that 
you're trying to make a case. I know many cases where people go to the police station to report a crime, and at the end of the day, they have to pay to drop the case because it's the, the, the requirements from the police to prosecute, or to prosecute the crime is much more than even um, the losses that you came to complain about. So this is a serious problem, and um, it must be addressed from the top down. All right, uh, let's talk about uh, one thing that has come out in all of these. I was uh, speaking, uh, you know, off, off, uh, you know, offline now with, uh, you know, some uh, security expert, uh, former uh, CPs around uh, the East. Uh, something about ethnicity came up. I just want to get your opinion concerning that. Uh, uh, he said that uh, one of them that he said that uh, one of the reasons why such attack, uh, you know will foster in the South is, is because of uh, most of the police officers there might not necessarily you know, be Easterners or be from that particular region. Does that hold water at all? Well, um, for effective policing, you need intelligence mm. coming in from the people. And when you, but for the rural people, it means you must buy their confidence, you must speak their they language, trust. you must understand their traditions, mm. and so on. So if you bring in somebody to help the police who does not understand all these things, and sometimes we even have situations, and we must not run away from this fact, we have Nigerians from some parts of the country who tend to look down on people from other parts of the country. So. If you bring someone from that area into, um, let's say, a state to head the police, you are already setting up for some kind of crisis. Uh, we, are, we see what's been happening with the, uh, the clashes, uh, if, you, if we may use that word, uh, between the local people and uh, headsmen and other people. And you find that sometimes the conventional police is actually from the same area, speaks the same dialect as these people who are, uh, who are creating these problems. So what do you expect when you go in the morning to complain at the police headquarters that people from certain parts of the north are creating problems with your local community? The response is at best going to be slow, and at worst um, will we'll we'll just not meet up to your requirements. All right. Uh, so ABM. I think that even the structure of the police needs to be looked into. All right, let's let's try and proffer some uh, you know possible solutions to all of um, these uh, menace as uh, we have now. Uh, not too long ago, the southeast governors, uh, you know, they converged on already the Emo State Capital, and that uh, they uh, declared uh, the formation of um, a regional security outfit, Abu uh, Agu. In your opinion, uh, is that what uh, should be the main thing to be done right now? Do you see regional security as a way forward to curbing or stemming the issue of insecurity in the south? East region? Well, anywhere in the world, regional security is a major factor. You'll recall that, in fact, the international community are no longer interested in sending troops to Africa, North Africa, East Africa, West Africa, whatever it is. They would rather have the countries within that area do all the dirty work. Maybe they'll supply funding and so on. So for, for regional security is a way forward. But the way we are going about it is more of, um, it's beginning to look like a publicity stunt. We oh, quickly really? come out with a name, we make a lot of noise about it, but what structure have we put, put in, in place? place? There is a need to give out um, a clear statistics. What's your plan? Uh, where, where, how is this organization going to be structured? How, what number of men are going to be involved? Uh, what, you know, like from a central headquarters to local headquarters, what is your plan and how do they intend to work? Until we come out with this clear arrangement of how they will work and interface with the Nigerian police, the Nigerian police will continue to uh, frustrate the efforts and we will continue to see nothing on ground. And don't mind me, uh, the, the fact that we may end up risking bringing in the wrong people into this regional security force if we don't get the right people 
I'm talking about the uniformed organizations, military, police, whatever, to help us structure, recruit, and train these individuals without doing right. a proper... Now you're talking about 1,600 men that were released from the prisons, or prisoners. If we don't do proper fact-checking, background-checking, and so on, we could end up getting some of these people into this so-called security force. We train them, we arm them, and then they become more of a problem to us than even what we were trying to cure. So these governors need to get their act together, okay. come out with a clear structure, mm. and then begin to, before they start talking right, about thank you so much, names ABM. that will come off. All right, thank you so much. Uh, once again, we have been speaking with Femi Badebo, a retired Air Vice Marshal, and uh, he has been uh, giving us his thought and input on how we can stem the issue of insecurity in the uh, southeastern part of Nigeria. Once again, we do appreciate your time, sir. Thank you very much for having me. All right, uh, thank you for staying with us. We'll take a short break now. And when we return, the United Kingdom announces plans to give asylum to some members of the indigenous people of Biafra IPOP. And the Nigerian government is not happy about it. We'll be right back. Stay with us. <laughs>